Europe and the US are throwing out more than 20 million tons of textiles every year, and the problem is growing. But so is the opportunity for change. These textiles are incredible resources to feed textile to textile recycling processes and create a circular industry. To reclaim these resources, textiles must be sorted by fiber composition, and the demand for recycled content must increase. That's where the fiber sort comes in. The fiber sort is a revolutionary textile sorting machine that is changing the game. It sorts finished textile products by fiber type, automatically creating precise recycling feedstocks, and finally providing a practical solution to return textiles to the supply chain. But we're not quite there yet. We need your help to optimize this technology and increase the demand for recycled textiles. Are you a collector, sorter, brand, or recycler? Then join the front runners in the textiles revolution and help make the fiber sort a reality. Go to fibersort.eu. Interesting this uh, presentation, short video introduction. Well, there is a, there is no better introduction than this video. So I would like to give the floor to Hans Pont and Maurits van der Put. I'm not sure who's starting with sharing his presentation. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. First, I'll try to set it up. Share. Mm. Yeah. Presentation mode, and then you can go there. Yeah. So go ahead. Right. So uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. So my name is uh, Moritz van der Putte. I work at uh, Valve on Bailing Systems as a project manager. And today I will give a presentation together with Hans Bonn from uh, Wieland Textiles on Fiber Sort. So um, the presentation today for Valve on, I'm going to give a small introduction who we are, then uh, talk a little bit about the Fiber Sort machine and also explain how the technology works. And then the second part will be given by Hans Bonn on smart fiber sorting and the bigger process of which fiber sort makes a part of. So, um, Valve and Bailing Systems is a Belgian uh, machine builder. We build uh, equipment for sorting and bailing solutions uh, for applications in the recycling industry, the fiber industry, and the used clothing industry. Um, in Europe, we, we build a lot of the bigger uh, sorting installations that handle post-consumer textiles uh, that are getting sorted into different categories and mostly are getting uh, resold um, in thrift stores today or uh, second-hand markets abroad. Uh, but more and more, there is a demand coming for um, textiles that, that can be recycled. And there is also a big fraction available in the sorting installations that has um, a very low value, but still there is a fiber inside. And that's why we designed a machine uh, to sort textiles based on fiber composition, color composition, and structure. So uh, the machine uh, is called uh, Fiber Sort. Um, it's an automatic sorting machine, sorting uh, textiles into different categories. Um, maybe I can eliminate this. Yeah. So uh, the machine makes a decision based on fiber composition, color, comp com color composition, and the fabric structure uh, where it should be sorted. Um, the machine uh, exists in different uh, setups. We have uh, automated feeding systems with robots, uh, but we have owned also uh, manual systems uh, where people load the textiles onto a scanning system. Um, the scanning system is always uh, a part of the installation. Uh, to make the decision uh, what it is. And then uh, there is a series of blowers, which you saw earlier in the video, that blow the textiles uh, based on the three predictions we make in the system into the right uh, category. Um, the fiber sort machine, uh, here is a, a 3D layout of the machine. Um, the production rate of the machine is more or less one sample every second. So we uh, sort textiles uh, on a piece per piece basis. Um, we do that because there is a very big variation and we need a lot of sorting categories. 
Um, there are also other setups with uh, optical sorting machines where there is only a selection of one fraction. Uh, but today we have a fiber sort uh, in facility of Hans uh, with 90 sorting categories. Uh, so therefore we need to put the samples one per one. Um, the, we can process with the scanners uh, 3,600 samples per hour and more or less there are uh, three pieces of textiles in a kilogram. So that makes a, a throughput of 1,200 kilograms uh, per hour. Um, then the feeding options, uh, as explained, it can be a manual feeding process, uh, but it can also be automatic with robots. Um, to be honest, uh, the robots are today a little less uh, fast than uh, uh, the manual operators because we are still optimizing uh, the setup and, and fine tuning everything a little bit, but the manual can be can be very quick. Um, the color sorting is working on two predictions. So the first one is we make a distinction between single color and multicolor. Uh, single color is everything that can be used in a mechanical recycling process uh, where we can eliminate the need for dyeing. Uh, multicolor is typically textiles with prints, which you can see in the right picture. And then uh, for the color sorting, the second step is that we make a very precise prediction of the color. So for example, we can sort blue, uh, red in different shades. Uh, nowadays we, we sort um, uh, 15 different colors for certain fiber fractions into all different color shades. Um, and this is very precise. It can be more precise than, a, than the, the human eye, but um, the more precise we make it, the more categories we want, we, we get. So we try to find um, a good um, um, balance between a number of categories and also the volume of uh, colors. Uh, the fiber source technology is based on uh, near infrared or in short NIR. Uh, the scanner emits a near infrared light that is uh, reflected or absorbed um, by the scanner. Uh, and the reflection profile of each textile composition is unique. Uh, and we use that information to um, make a prediction on which fibers are inside the textile. Uh, one scan uh, takes more or less 50 milliseconds, but um, to get the pieces of textile piece per piece, we uh, can scan more or less uh, one sample every second. Uh, in this picture, you can see um, in red uh, a spectrum of uh, pure cotton, in blue a spectrum of pu pure uh, polyester, and in green a mix between the two. Uh, you can see it's not uh, easy for the human eye to, to make a link or to, to understand these spectra. Um, these spectra um, represent the amount of reflection of each wavelength of the light. Um, so um, what we see is that uh, the same um, fiber categories, uh, for example, 100% polyester, uh, all the lines are grouped nicely together. And then we create a, a machine learning al algorithm that predicts uh, which fiber is on the scanner based on these uh, spectral information. Um, so why do we need fiber sort? Um, to sort by fiber type with a very high accuracy and increased speed. Uh, the alternative is a manual sorting uh, with a lot of limitations. A trainer uh, would need more or less six seconds to read the label and then still has to take an action. Um, use clothing all, also doesn't always have a, a label and some of the labels are inaccurate, so it's uh, not possible to, to have an accurate sorting based on a, on a manual process without scanning equipment. All right, that's it for my part, Hans. Yes, it's interesting to hear you, Maurits, as a, mach a young machine builder, because there is no history in this whole thing at all. Where does this come from, this, uh, this fiber sort idea? It's already, what, 13 years now? Uh, that we try to develop some kind of technology who is able to add value and to make uh, uh, wordless material circular. It started a long, long time ago and there is a very good productive machine now. Uh, uh, and um, <clears throat> what happened is when this machine finally got productive, we still had garments. And the industry was not really interested in garments. The industry wants a raw material. So we started looking into 
building a machine that is able to remove all contamination, remove buttons, zippers, but also labels. Because almost all labels are made out of polyester. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you have a cotton garment or wool garment or nylon or whatever. There is always this polyester label, which is a contamination for whatever you would like to do with the material afterwards. So what do we do? We have the garment, we cut up this garment and with a new technology, which is still under development at Fall van Baling Systems, we try to take out all this contamination, the buttons, the zippers, but also the labels. Uh, we call this innovation the trim clean, which is not done yet. We are still developing that, but uh, well, uh, maybe Maurits can tell a bit more about this later, but this innovation, gives us the opportunity to create post-consumer clippings. We know post-industrial clippings, but we are heading for post-consumer uh, clip clippings, which creates a raw material that we can fiberize. And after these fibers, we are able to do spinning, uh, more or less uh, uh, by adding virgin material. But we just heard Nicholas, and they are already able to make very uh, um, acceptable genes with 50% post-consumer content, which is quite an achievement. We call this whole process, including the software, we call it a fiber farm. And this, is, um, this whole concept is scalable. So we would like to set up this concept worldwide. Wherever there is a large population, you collect textiles, you sort it, and you trim clean it, you make post-consumer clippings in order to, uh, uh, to, to make new yarns. Um, finally, you see that, um, because I, I already memorized, it took me about 13 years to set up this fiber sort idea and there was no market. And what we see now all of a sudden is that governments are interfering. Governments make policy that in 2025, 25% post-consumer recycled content should be in all garments. That made the industry very restless. And all of a sudden, because governments are stepping in, you see there is a lot of dynamics. And now the market is rapidly uh, uh, asking for post-consumer material. And um, well, one big initiative in this whole thing is the denim deal. Uh, uh, um, which uh, should bring us 3 million uh, genes uh, with at least 20% post-consumer content in the next two years. So, um, yeah, all, all together we are making big steps in uh, cleaning up this textile mess that we are creating by producing all that textile material. So far, my part on this presentation. maybe to um, elaborate a little bit on, on the trim clean that Hans mentioned. Um, so the fiber sort uh, uh, can now accurately sort um, a textile bulk material into 90 different categories. And then uh, we thought we were there and we, we could start recycling. Uh, but uh, the, the reality is that uh, to be able to process it on a, uh, on a line to create new yarns, uh, you have to take out all the zippers, buttons and labels. And so now we are uh, working hard with the team to create also a technology to take out automatically all these um, um, zippers, labels and buttons. Um, it's uh, still uh, in a development phase, so we are not ready yet uh, for the market, but uh, the first trials uh, look uh, really promising. And we think or we aim to, to create a, a product very similar to post-industrial clippings, as Hans mentioned. And it's a good name, the post-consumer clippings. It captures uh, very well the, the essence of it. Right. And um, you, you understand that we put a lot of pressure on uh, Maurits to come up with this trim clean machine because he, his machine at the moment, his, this innovation is our missing link. Uh, um, to make our next step. Uh, for now, we do that with zippers, uh, with uh, scissors, to cut out buttons, labels, and zippers. But you know, if you want to go to mainstream, 
uh, we need to, to make that uh, uh, an industrial solution. And that's where Maurits comes in with the trim clean. Uh, 